So, you want to be smarter and you think reading is your best bet? Congratulations, you're already smarter than most. But if you want to be in the top 1%, you have to get selective with your choices. Of course, all my recommendations today are going to be non-fiction, lest you want to end up with books like 50 Shades. I mean, it does make you smarter in very selected areas, but this video isn't about that. All of these books tackle different areas of what I think makes a person smarter. It's not like book 1 or book 2 or book 3, I suggest you read all of them, or at least watch this video till the end so you get an idea of what all of them are about. Of course, all the links will be in the description so you can purchase them if you want, or if you can't purchase them, watch this video where I explain how you can download them very easily for free. So when you interact with a person, what are the things that makes you think they're smart? Firstly, I think it's a good memory. Secondly, it's the power of manipulation, their understanding of people. And thirdly, I think it's their rationality. Let's start with the first one, memory. Don't we all envy people who have the perfect line to quote in every situation? I mean, the ones with seemingly photographic memory. While people like me and the author and some of you perhaps, I could read a book for hours and by the end have only a vague notion of what it was about or forget where I've kept my keys every day or if I've locked the door just after locking it. I mean, I'm horrible with remembering people's birthdays. Even names are hard. This book, Moonwalking with Einstein by Joshua Foyer, The Art and Science of Remembering Everything, is perfect for people like me. To give you a spoiler about this book, there is no such thing as photographic memory. It's a myth. But like you learn in this book, the only two cases ever recorded in history of such a thing came with serious disadvantages. But after you learn the techniques from this book and with quite a bit of practice, you can achieve something remarkably similar. Anyway, written by a science journalist, this book takes us on his journey from one day just attending the US Memory Championship for some coverage just to write some articles to winning it just a year later. Along the way, he explains the wonders of our brain, how memory works and the role these techni techniques played in the times of our ancestors and how its standing has declined over the years. I mean, memory techniques were a centerpiece of classical education. Students were thought not only what to remember, but how to remember it. There's this very old book called Adheranium in which the author writes that he doesn't want to waste ink and paper explaining these techniques because it was common knowledge at that point and an important part of daily life. In a world with few books, memory was sacred. But today we have different problems. We have all the knowledge in the world, but don't know how to remember it. Today, these techniques are considered as nothing more than get smart quick schemes. This book will also teach you how and why a memory became so bad, which is after the printing press and writing was invented. Some people might argue, it's not that we don't need to remember everything. But the author counters this argument in a surprisingly beautiful way with a ton of science behind it. All interesting, of course. I mean, I love this book. It's not only incredibly informative, but also very entertaining. These techniques will not only help you feel more confident, but also allow you to impress others with your broad warehouse of stored information. My first encounter with such a technique was when I was looking for a cram school in 10th grade. I attended this seminar kind of thing and this bald guy did a stunt. He asked each one of us, uh, I think there were like 100 students there, he asked each one of us for our seat numbers and then any random object along with it. And by the end he claimed that he could recite the whole list in order. I remember being blown away by this, like how is this possible, he just heard it once. And he did, he could recite the whole list in order, he could recite it backwards. If you tell him the seat number, he could tell you the object or if you tell him the object, he could tell you the seat number. And he promised to teach everyone who enrolled the secret to how he did that. And of course I immediately applied. Same as then as after reading this book, I was shocked as to why this isn't taught to us when we were kids in school, when we were dying to memorize things by just repeating it again and again. This would have made life so much easier and laid a very solid foundation for the future. I mean, there's something called the Dunbar number which means a person can only remember up to seven things by, uh, with rote memorization and using a simple technique like chunking for example remembering a 10 digit phone number is hard but when you chunk it in this form it's a whole lot easier and you will remember it for longer and while we all say our memory sucks this book will make you appreciate it so much the human memory is remarkable at remembering visual things or spatial patterns and using these advantages we can remember slippery or boring information like numbers or your grocery list or whatever it might be and this is exactly what is done in the mind palace technique which is used by most of the mind athletes who can remember poems or or uh, decks of cards or in order or hundreds of random letters and numbers etc and this is also what makes Sherlock Holmes so smart because he uses the mind palace technique perfectly all right but maybe it's not a drug no it has to be a drug how did it get into our systems? How? There must be something, something... Something... Something very deep. Get out. What? Get out, I need to go to my mind palace. The what? Uh, he's not going to be doing much talking for a while, we may as well go. His what? Oh, his... Mind palace. It's a... Memory technique, a sort of mental map. You plot a, a map with a location. It doesn't have to be a real 
place and then you deposit memories there. But theoretically, you can never forget anything. All you have to do is find your way back to it. So this imaginary location could be anything, a house or a street? Yeah. This is a palace. He said it was a palace. Yeah, well, it would, wouldn't it? Another thing I found fascinating was the relationship between memory and perception. What makes a police officer and a chess player so smart? I mean, a police officer could just look at a person and have a feel of whether they're suspicious or not, or a chess player could make a move just because it felt right and not really explain why, even though the move might feel counterintuitive to a normal person. So they aren't really looking into the future, but just drawing on their wealth of perception. And what is perception? Memory honed through years of experience rather than their innate ability of analysis. There's this line in the book that perfectly sums it up. A great memory isn't a byproduct of expertise, but the very essence of it. Apart from making you smarter, this book will also make you happier because we've all had times when we reach the end of the year and we're like, where the hell did that go? And so remembering more will give you more fulfillment. I mean, if I could just give away copies of this novel to all my subscribers for free, I would, but this channel doesn't make any money yet. So subscribe and ask all your friends to subscribe. The most important effect or benefit of this book for me was to get excited about learning techniques. Oh, that reminds me, if you are a student in school, college or university, apart from memorizing techniques, memory techniques, there are also techniques that help you study more effectively. I've made a video about it. It's right here, which you can watch after this video. There's a line in this book that stuck with me. The more you know, the easier it is to know more. Our brain isn't good at remembering isolated facts. It remembers things in context. Our memory is like a spider web. The more it catches, the bigger it grows, and the bigger it grows, the more it catches. The studies mentioned in this book are brilliant, and the results will shock you, and by the end you will have thanked me a hundred times for recommending this, because it's just such a great book. It's the only science book I couldn't put down, and it has opened up a new genre for me. Alright, going on. I've gone long enough waffling all about it. What is the next thing that would give you a sense of a man's smartness? Manipulation. A smart man always gets his way, and he or she accomplishes this by their scary understanding of people. The second book recommendation, Freakonomics. It's a very popular book which you might have heard. A Rogue Economist Explores the Hidden Side of Everything by Stephen D. Levitt and Stephen J. Dubner. It's a fantastic book. My copy smells good too. An international bestseller and it has a movie made on it. This book will help you make better judgments of people or situations. This book is all about incentives, which is simply a means of doing more of a good thing or less of a bad thing. At this moment, there are probably countless people who wish to affect your behavior. Some of them might include politicians or policemen, your parents, your spouse, your boss. All of these tactics might vary from bribery and threats to charm and deceit. They all have one thing in common. They rely on the power of incentives. Only by understanding and acknowledging these incentives can we begin to develop strategies to counteract them. The way this book is structured is that it has no unifying theme. It's just like a bunch of random things patched together, but every chapter tackles a different question, a different unasked, unusual, but very interesting questions. And some of them would be, what do school teachers and sumo wrestlers have in common? How is the Ku Klux Klan like a group of real estate agents? Why do drug dealers still live with their moms? Where have all the criminals gone? This book will change your thinking. Like many a times when we think a certain uh, person is being good to you or uh, being selfless, it's actually not the case. Even the ones you're paying, like your doctors, your mechanics, your real estate agents, uh, or many a times when you think a certain thing is causing something, it's actually not the case. There are other factors at play here, like the surprising crime rate drop of 1990 in America, where it was credited to the strong economy or innovative policing strategies, but what actually caused it was the legalization of abortion. I know this sounds ridiculous, maybe even offensive, but the author explains it with a ton of data behind it, and uh, there are other studies in the book that will completely blow your mind. This book will challenge your own rational thinking and prejudice and make bizarre connections in seemingly unrelated things. And by the end, you will be able to recognize incentives, make uninfluenced decisions and recognize patterns in everything. This will teach you so much about human nature, about how people react to certain situations and how given the right incentive, even the best of us can be made to do something that they'd never even think of otherwise. There's a story about this guy who sold bagels. I don't want to spoil it, but it will teach you so much about the innate evil in all of us and how incentives can be used to wrestle with it. The author is a genius to connect one unrelated point to something completely different and think about seemingly stupid questions and reach surprising results and give us such a compelling book. I mean, this book will surely inspire you to think out of the box. The author takes you through so many roads, they'll take you to more roads, they'll take you to more roads just to prove one point. I mean, there's this chapter where half the chapter <laughs> turns out to be dating advice, but in any case, you will learn a a lot. It will also teach you about the systems placed all around you and the power of information. I want to reread this book now. The author dives deep into parenting in the last two chapters and covering some of the popular myths. I'm no parent, but 
probably a mosquito. Anyway, do names matter? Does your bringing matter? The author even questions if parents matter at all. I was telling this to my mom the other day and she straight up told me to throw the damn book away. But like the author says, it's what the data proves. My favorite chapter is about the Ku Klux Klan and how its growth was hampered by one man and his brilliant idea. I mean, the whole chapter is like a joke. And uh, the one about the workings of the drug trade was uh, very interesting too. My favorite line would be, when two things are happening simultaneously, it doesn't mean that one thing is causing the other. And I found this to be the most recurring error in my thinking. Another effect of this book is that you will ask a lot of questions. In any case, the links are in the description so you can purchase them. Or if you don't want to purchase them or if you can't purchase them, watch this video where I explain how you can download them for absolutely free. The third thing that makes a person appear smarter is their rationality. Humans have a lot of instincts hardwired into their brains. These instincts were vital for the survival of our ancestors perhaps, but in this day and age, to us, they do more harm than good. Instincts like fear, destiny, blame, urgency, they can sometimes work against our own interests, blind us to facts and draw us to believe something which seems more convincing or convenient. Look at this image, which line do you think is longer, the upper one or the lower one? This is the famous Mueller liar illusion. Both lines are actually of the same length, it's just the difference of the inverted arrowheads. Look again. Now, even when we know both lines are of the same length, we still continue to see one longer than the other. And this is the result of our innate instincts. And these instincts are often used by the ones in power to manipulate statistics to influence public opinion. This book, Factfulness, corrects your worldview and gives you tools to separate fact from fiction when forming your opinions. It's a Bill Gates recommendation, that's how I found it. And it's also a Barack Obama recommendation. The author was one from the list of the 100 most influential people on the planet before he passed away having dedicated the last years of his life writing this book. He also has a TED talk on the topic. This book starts off with some simple questions about the world. Questions like, in low-income countries, how many girls finish primary school? 20%, 40%, 60%? The answer is 60%. In the last 20 years, the proportion of world population living in, living in extreme poverty has almost doubled, remained more or less the same, almost halved. The answer is almost halved. There are 2 billion children in the world today. How many children will there be in the year 2100, according to the United Nations? 4 billion, 3 billion, 2 billion. The answer is 2 billion. It'll remain the same. How many world's one-year-olds have been vaccinated against some disease? 20%, 50%, 80%. The answer is 80%. How many people in the world have access to electricity? 20%, 50%, 80%. The answer is 80%. But most of the people get these answers wrong, systematically wrong, so wrong that a chimpanzee choosing answers at random would consistently outguess even a journalist which shows that even the people who are in charge of presenting us the world are in fact ignorant of the real thing. It turns out the world, for all its imperfections, is in a much better state than we would like to imagine. And if we worry about everything all the time, we can lose the ability to focus on things that truly threaten us most. This book will help you make better decisions, stay alert to real dangers and open up opportunities. It will teach you so much about the world. This book will also help you hone your dramatic instincts, provide tools for rational thinking and consuming information and also help you get over mega misconceptions. Some of the mega misconceptions are that the world is still divided into the West and the rest or that the world is always getting worse. The author provides a better way of dividing the world and that is by the four income levels and that is a simpler way of understanding everything from terrorism to sex education and all the problems that are causing it. Understanding the income levels and the world markets, most people have a systematically wrong perception about this. And this understanding is very important, especially if you want to be entrepreneurs or international business owners. The Western domination of the world is set to shrink from 60 to 40% in the next decade or two. And also uh, that uh, the American population or the European population will remain more or less the same, but the African population is set to increase threefold. That means 3 billion more people in the world will need stuff, will need products. And this is where the businesses need to be focusing on right now. But most of them are oblivious to it. Most of them are living in their own imaginary version of the world. And also they need to understand that the Asian population is thrice as large as the American population or the European population. And as this population gets more educated, gets smarter, the Western population, or the Western domination of the world will soon end. So businesses need to think about this and take steps before it's too late. After reading this book, you will have enormous respect for the author. I mean, he's a doctor firstly, and uh, he's been through so much and helped so many people. I mean, there's this incidental story when a bunch of Swedish villagers throw the author a, a thank you party because no one has ever been so far to ask them of their problems. And he was served grilled rat and lightly cooked larvas for, uh, for dinner. 
and the villagers were proud to offer such luxury and the author was forced to eat just not to seem rude. All the problems around us can seem one dimensional but it is only after you read this book that you will appreciate the hidden depths to the topic. The author also takes topics like global warming or overpopulation or terrorism and gives us hope rather than a sense of doom. So uh, this book also has a peace giving aspect to it. The tools mentioned in this book, for example, never stress over a lonely number. Like you can see in the news that 4 million kids died this year and last year it could be 40 million. So always compare data and uh, analyze, analyze the slow progress that is taking place over time and look for what caused it and how it could be better instead of just feeling hopeless. Also, risk is equal to danger into exposure. You might be terrified of terrorism, but you have to see that your loved one is more likely to die from, uh, from a drunk driver rather than being bombed or your kid is more likely to die drowning in a pool rather than being shot. So you have to learn to see the danger for what it really is so that you can sleep peacefully at night and that you can spend your mental energy to finding solutions for worse problems. You also have to learn about this because the wrong worldview can cause you a lot of harm. There's a story in this book where the author was in India with some of his students and uh, one of the students was late while they were leaving the building or something and uh, they got into they waited for 15 minutes and then decided not to wait any longer and they got into the elevator and as the doors were closing they saw the student rushing through the corridor so one of the students put her leg in between the doors to stop it but the doors didn't stop closing and her leg was caught in between. She almost lost her leg before uh, one of the guide members pressed the emergency stop button. Her, her leg was bleeding by then. She thought all elevators have sensors in them and this is the danger of generalization. Of course, that was India back in the day. Now, of course, I think all elevators have sensors. Uh, me personally, I've never uh, checked. Another incident where the author was embarrassed was when he was called to lecture a class in India, a medical second year class I guess, and uh, he assumed that the education level would be inferior but surprisingly the students knew more than him and their textbooks were thicker than his and uh, by the end he had to ask one of the students if he was in the correct class. This book broadens your horizons and makes you open-minded and curious towards the world rather than thinking like you know everything. There is one more thing that stuck with me and that is this line. Except that bad things happen without anyone intending them to and sometimes even as a result of good intentions. Instead, spend your energy to understand the multiple unintended causes and the systems that cause it. It is only when you curb your blame instinct that you will look beyond the facade towards the truth. If I could give away copies of this book for free to all my subscribers, I would again. This channel doesn't make any money. So subscribe and tell your friends too. In conclusion, I'd say by the end of the first book, your memory is better. After the second book, your judgment of people and situations are better. After the third book, your arguments are better. And if you max out on these three skills, tell me that isn't the smartest person on the planet. There are also other books and skills that I wanted to talk about, like this one, Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. But this video is already quite long and uh, it's 3 a.m. right now. Anyway, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on later uploads because I'll be making more of them. And if you found this video helpful, drop a like to share your support and comment down whatever you have in your mind and I'll be sure to reply to each and every comment. Watch these videos which will be sure to provide you lots of value and check out the channel for other good stuff. Until next time, see ya. I am so tired. I need to sleep. Oh. Even my water is over. Ooh. It's raining, it's raining, it's raining.